Hey everyone, welcome to Yester Kitchen. I'm Jill, and today we are gonna talk about my favorite decade and my favorite thing in my favorite decade, and that would be the 1970s cocktail party. And I'm gonna talk about a long lost appetizer that I'm really trying to help make a comeback because it's fabulous. I'm talking about the canapé. And because it's so wonderful, I gave you three recipes and I talked quite a bit, which made it way too long of a video. So what I did was I broke it up into three parts. Part one is gonna have all the history along with the recipe. Part two and three are gonna have recipes. So if you're watching part two or three right now, go back and watch part one as well. And you'll get the history of this glorious appetizer and you'll wanna make it yourself. <laughs> and now I wanna to present to you the pinwheel. Hey everyone, welcome to Yester Kitchen. I'm Jill. And today I got rid of the apron, I got rid of the pearls, I've got my party dress on because we are going to my favorite decade and we're going to do my favorite thing in my favorite decade. I am talking about the 1970s cocktail party and there is, there is, there was nothing more classic or wonderful than that. So let's talk about the cocktail party. The cocktail parties really started in the 60s and the 70s just kind of piggybacked onto them. But there was just something more advanced about the 70s, even though, I mean, we had in the 60s and we can, we'll definitely cover the 60s, I promise you. But the 70s were just more free and more social and more, um, people just interacted so much. Before there were, you know, little cocktail parties. Now it's like, hey, come on over neighbors, let's have cocktail hour. And actually, cocktail hour, in some homes used to be cocktail hour. After work, one house would say, hey, I'll do it. And they would make cocktails, a couple appetizers. People would literally come home from, come over from work for an hour, have fun, catch up, have a little drink, have a little something to eat, and then go home and have their night. It was literally an hour. But these parties kind of blossomed. And there were a couple different things about cocktail parties. One would be a dinner party, and someone would invite friends over for dinner. And before dinner, they would serve drinks and pass around a few appetizers, but not too much because we didn't want to ruin anyone's appetite for dinner. And yes, people did pass around appetizers. It was so cool. I know now a lot of times we just kind of leave them on a table. I'm guilty of the same thing, but passing around an appetizer was so much more social. Hey, would you like blah, blah, blah. And I'll make three things for you today. Super easy, super versatile for any budget you're gonna love them and they go great with alcohol and they're kind of non-existent right now. So I'm, in a, I'm on a um, cause to bring them back. Anyway, <laughs> I'm all over the map today because I'm so excited. So cocktail parties. Cocktail parties began in the 60s, but in the 70s they kind of morphed into more of a bigger event. More people, they, had, um, they were replacing dinner so the hostess would make many different kinds of appetizers. Today, we're gonna to focus on canapes. Canapes are, all, a, a definition of a perfect canapé is something with a base. It could be bread, it could be cracker, melba toast, party rye, um, very, very dry toast, something with a base. Then you usually had a layer of some flavored butter or even plain butter, and you put, or you, and, or you can mix things in. Cream cheese was also an acceptable base, and either mix-ins or not, and then you could decorate with all kinds of things on top. It was very much an eye-catching dish. And where did they start? Well, like a lot of wonderful things, it started out of Prohibition because people would go underground to drink, either someone's home or speakeasy. And the people that were hosting these realized, well, we can't just send people out completely hammered because the cops will find them and lead them right back to us. So maybe we should give them a little food to mix with that alcohol so they won't be stumbling on the way home. And they picked up canapes because they were bread based and they would absorb <laughs> the alcohol and you know just help them get home without being noticed. So thank you 1920s for giving us bringing back the canapes. Canapes actually go way 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 before that but I'm not going to get into the history of that today because we want to get into the 1970s, oh, the glorious 70s. I love them because I was actually there. <laughs> I was a kid, I saw the 70s through a child's eye and now I'm learning about the 70s through an adult's eye and it's wonderful. Oh, I've been asked, when am I gonna drink this thing? Today, 
I promise. We're talking about cocktail parties and I've got my cocktail. I'm not even gonna teach you how to make a dirty martini. There's wonderful videos out there to learn, but I'm all about the food. Let's get started. Today, I'm gonna teach, teach you three different canapes. The first one is called a pinwheel. Pinwheels are kind of cool because they're eye-catching, they're pretty. Um, you can put anything into these pinwheels. So we're gonna start with three ounces of cream cheese. Now these recipes are all straight out of the 70s. So back then, a three ounce block of cream cheese was sold in the store. It was about that big, they were really cute. But now all we have is eight ounces. So just go ahead and either cut it in half and maybe a little less or just cut it in half. These recipes are so subjective and so great and so easy and you can make any variation you want. I'm gonna do a ham-based pinwheel and you're gonna love how they come out. And we're eventually we're gonna wind up with a little platter of canapes for our party. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take cream cheese and let it soften. You let, always let your butter soften, always let your cream cheese soften for all of these recipes. So we're gonna start with three ounces of cream cheese and you wanna just really just stir that. I've already done it ahead of time so you're not watching me beat the cream cheese. But just, and once it, if it's soft, you'll be fine. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stir the cream cheese and you can see how smooth that is and ready to go. And to that, we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of Dijon. There we go. And about two tablespoons of light cream, half and half. And you wanna just kinda of mix that around. And don't give up, keep mixing because it's gonna take a few for the cream and the cream cheese to incorporate. Okay, so we have our cream cheese, and we have our mustard, and we have our light cream all mixed together. And as you can see, it's very smooth and pretty. And we're gonna add about two tablespoons of chopped ham, really finely chopped, because you're gonna roll this up. So there we go, look at that. Isn't that spectacular? Okay, now we're gonna go on to phase two of our operation. And that's the bread. Canapes, never crust, ever. So, we're gonna take our little bread. I'm just gonna do two slices just for this demonstration, but this will make, cover up to about, about six slices of bread. And you wanna cut the crust off, just like our moms did with our sandwiches. Well, I don't know about yours, but I had my crust cut off because for whatever reason, I didn't like crust. I don't know why, it's bread. But when you're a kid, you learn. No broccoli, no crust, right? <laughs> Okay, so we have that. And now, we need to flatten out the bread. So we've got out our trusty rolling pin, which needs to be tightened. I'm gonna get rid of these. And we are gonna roll out our bread. Just like this. Make it pretty flat. So, what if you don't have a rolling pin? I got you covered. Check this out. You swap this for this. I kid you not, it will work perfectly. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bread, put a little paper towel, just cause you don't know who's touched the rolling, the bottle. If you don't care, don't worry about it. I care. And use your bottle to just make this a beautiful rolled out piece of bread. Works every time. Look at that, perfect. Okay, then what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take a little, whoop, you can't see that, can you? There we go. So we're gonna take a little bit of our ham mixture Spread it on. Yes, you can use a knife. Yes, you can use a spoon. Yes, you can use whatever you would like to use. So cocktail parties were so great because they got people to socialize. 
I am a big believer that a lot of our socialization <laughs> is kind of lost. I mean, people actually sit in the same room and text each other. So if you're going to have a party, and I highly encourage you to try a 70s cocktail party. It's just human interaction. Put the phones down. Talk to each other. How was your day? Not, how was your day? And just really hear what's going on in people's lives. It's, it enhances your life like you wouldn't believe. Back to our recipe. So we're gonna actually take two of these because I'm gonna make, give you two different versions. So we're gonna take this guy and put some on there too. You are gonna love this. It is just gonna be the cutest thing. You notice my voice goes high a lot. I'm sorry. I'll try not to do that. Okay. Now, on one, you're gonna take black olives, or you can take green stuffed olives, stuffed with pimento, stuffed with garlic, stuffed with anything you like, but I like the color contrast. And we're gonna roll it up, just like that. That's one. The other one, we're gonna take cornichons, which are tiny, look how cute they are. Tiny, tiny, tiny little vinegared pickles. These are not sweet, these are vinegared. You can use sweet if you want. Like I said, this recipe is so versatile. You can not use ham, you can use um, chicken, you can use tuna. Okay, now we're gonna get rid of this bowl and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. You take a piece of wax paper, put it down, and tightly start rolling this guy up. When you're done, twist the edges. So you have this little firecracker thing going on. Isn't that cute? Then we're gonna do the other one. And we're gonna wrap this up. And do the same exact thing. So twist, and we're gonna go twist. You're gonna take your firecrackers and you're gonna put them in the fridge, preferably overnight, because they really need to set up. Um, if you're in a pinch for time, maybe two hours, but they really need to set up, because you know cream cheese goes from very soft and you gotta be able to cut them and eat them. But, lucky for you, I have two ready to go. And they're gonna be kinda like little surprises. So, we've got one. And we've got two. Now check this out. Got my little trusty knife. You wanna just cut the very ends off because presentation is key here. When you pass these around, when someone has a drink in their hand, look at that. The whole idea behind cocktail appetizers is that they wanna be finger food. So literally, a person can walk around with a drink in one hand and an appetizer in the other. And that's what makes the perfect finger food. So now we're gonna open up our olive one. Look at that. Look at those beautiful things. So just remember, take care of your guests. Make sure they have something really hearty. If this is a cocktail party, they're not having dinner. So make sure there's something that's really gonna fill them up and help them not get so drunk so fast. That's your job as a host. Oh, never point a knife at anyone. Bad idea. So now we're gonna finish cutting these and we're gonna put them on our plate and we're gonna start to build our beautiful little canapé tray. I have this adorable little platter that I actually got from a dear friend of mine. Thank you, Samira. That just couldn't be more perfect for this. So we're just gonna start by putting maybe every other one out there. And now I'm gonna take a little couple minute break. I'm gonna switch out all these ingredients. I'm gonna switch into my next one and you're gonna learn how to make shrimp triangles. And remember, history never tasted so good.